Hi, this is Simon Wright from ACDC and Dio, and you are on Linear Rock. Cheers. <laughs> Chip tables. <laughs> okay. Hi, Simon. Hi, Barbara. How are you? Fine. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good to have you here. Welcome to Milano and welcome to Linear Rock. Nice to be in Milano. Nice to be here. So, the occasion this time, you're back touring uh, in Italy and also Switzerland, Estonia, and so on uh, with an ACDC tribute band called Riff Raff. Uh, thanks to Edo, who brought you here. Um, I guess this is a great trip on the memory lane for you. Are you enjoying it? And actually, this is not the first time you're doing this. Uh, what did they have to do to convince you to come back and do it again? Um, well, it was more a, ca a case of schedule, my scheduling because I have so many other things going on, you know. Thank God, that's good. <laughs> um, you know, and my, my uh, calendar schedule opened up a little bit, so I was lucky enough to to uh, come over and, and uh, uh, play with Riff Raff. I mean, they're a really great band. They do a fantastic show, ACDC show, and they play the music yeah. really well. Um, so, the, you know, like the last time I came over, that was 2013, I think. Something yes, like that? Yes, I guess so. Yeah, or maybe even... 2012. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, yeah, and it was great then, you know. Um, so to come back again, I had the time and stuff and see Italy, and I got many friends over here, so it seemed like a great thing to do, just come out and jam some ACDC tunes. So you are enjoying it. Did you have the chance also to pick some songs, to choose, you know, the set list? Or... Well, we did talk about it, yeah, and we, uh, you know, we thought it'd be a good idea to maybe touch on some songs from, you know, like the albums that I was... Uh, involved with and right. and also we're doing some songs from from uh, 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 from Who Made Who and Fly on the Wall um, and also um, oh and Flick of the Switch yeah oh, okay. yeah which is which is good because I I don't think people have heard those songs live for quite some time now so is this the only chance you have to play those songs again and do you uh, actually it's natural for you to play them again i mean it's like riding a bike that when you learn them you never forget them it, or, <laughs> it, that's what it's like yeah okay. it, it, and it's nice to be to play them you know and hear that hear those riffs again those songs and all it's it's um it, it's really good and like i said a lot of people didn't get a chance to see the band play those right. songs so it's um we're, we're reviving them is there anything more exciting than playing ACDC live for you? Um, it, it's, it's, it's cool. There are a lot of things that <laughs> excite me in life. <laughs> but we okay. won't go into that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, it's cool to be playing them again. Yeah, for sure. Uh, about going down on the memory lane. Um, back in the early 80s, um, how did you find out about ACDC that we're looking for a drummer? And what do you remember of the audition that you did with them? Yeah, that was, um, I was in London. I'd moved down from Manchester in England to London. And I was in a band, but we weren't doing very much. The band was called Titan. They were a heavy metal band. Pretty good, pretty good band. But nothing was really going on. And a friend of mine, um, you know, showed me this advertisement in a music paper okay um it was called sounds and it said um drummer wanted if you don't hit hard don't apply <laughs> so she said well you you hit hard don't you so well, yeah okay so she convinced me to go down I, I go down there they said really nice rehearsal studio um so i thought oh well maybe this band's got some money i can it might be good so i did three songs um black dog by zeppelin and uh, shoot the thrill and Tush by ZZ Top, and it was just with the drum technician. Okay. Um, and no it, band. No band. No, mm. I, no, I didn't know who it was. Okay. I didn't know anything. So, so yeah, he said that was great. We'll call you back. And I went, oh, okay, right, you know. And then he calls back about probably th two hours later. Wow! And Immediately. He said, <laughs> yeah, more or less. I mean, and he said, C can you come down tomorrow? And I said, no, I haven't got any money, <laughs> you know. So, uh, he, but he said. Don't worry about that. Just get yourself in a in a taxi in a car, 
and we'll pay for it and stuff. So I thought, oh, this is good, you know. So I go down the next day. He meets me in the lobby, and he takes me. He's taking me down the passages, and there's all these flight cases with ACDC on them. Okay. So. And uh, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> and he's. I said, what's going on here? Is this for, is this real? And he he just turned around, and gave me a big smile, went, yeah. <laughs> so wow. I'm like, oh my Jesus Christ. <laughs> so your heart <clears throat> was beating faster. Yeah, a little yeah. bit, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> But then I, I go in and I meet them. There was Angus and Mal and Cliff. Um, Brian wasn't there. He was back in Florida or something. I'm not sure why. But, um, you know, they were really cool and they were down to earth and they said, do you know any songs? I said, I know a couple. You know, we, we can try them out. And we just got to it, started playing. And uh, they were very cool. They were very, very down to earth. And we stopped for a little bit and sat down. They started talking about a tour and stuff and that. Uh, I think I turned around to Mal and said, does this mean I'm in the band? And he went, well, yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? So, <laughs> Good one. And then my whole life changed. <laughs> yeah, of course. And that was pretty quick as well, because the album was already out, uh, Flick of the Switch. Yes. And so the tour was about to start. Yes. Uh, did they give you any specific inputs on what <laughs> they wanted, or you actually already knew what they wanted, and it was like very natural and free? Um, yeah, they, uh, you know, they, they really didn't say anything, just play the songs, you know, okay. just, just play, play, play the songs. And that's what I did when I, when I, when I rehearsed with them the first, the first time there. Yeah. I just played them the way that they, they were on the record or as best I could. Is the place so. where you shot all the flick of the switch videos, the place where you rehearsed? No, okay. no. That was a sound stage in Los Angeles, I think right. called Zoetrope. Okay. Studios. So that was a session just for the video. Clip. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. The 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 initial re uh, audition was in London. How many ACDC songs did you already know by then? I mean, which was the first time that you heard or saw ACDC? Um, no, I'd never heard them before. Oh. No, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew I knew a lot of them. You know, I, I you just. Um, one of the things I think is good about for drummers to learn is the simplicity of Phil Rudd. Yeah. You know, because even though it's simple, it has to swing, you know. So I think if a lot of drummers should start with listening to ACDC and the way it swings and the way it, that simplicity is, yeah. it's, it, it's not easy. No. You can go, brrrr, but... Just keeping it solid and tight is, yeah. is a whole other thing, you know. Yeah. Um, you've been with ACDC quite a few years, but in a weird period, let's say, of the band, the post Back in Black era, uh, you know, with the big success of that album, great expectations, you know, from all. And the critics actually kept on saying that the band was losing creativity, you know, just because they couldn't reach the Back in Black levels in sales um how did you leave that uh i mean you find yourself in one of the biggest bands in the world but something seemed you know not to go the proper way so how did you leave yeah that? well we were too busy touring to, to to really think about it okay um because the the shows were still selling really really well you did the rio show which was huge yes <laughs> yes that was with queen um and wow. uh Uh, I can't remember who else is on right now. But, But anyway, yeah, I mean, we were preoccupied with, um, with, with always being on the road. We'd be on the road for seven, eight months out of the year, um, sometimes more. So, um, but I do understand what your question is. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to keep that momentum going, you know, like, like, like Highway to Hell, Back in Black, right. for those about a rock. Right. I mean, how you can't just keep... We're churning out those those hits, not churning out, but it, it must be re as a. I mean, I wasn't involved in the songwriting either, so it, it must be really hard to keep coming up with those those. Um, but I still think there's some good songs on on Blow Up Your Video. Those, in my opinion, are great albums as well. But you cannot, yeah. you know, compete with something like Back in Black. No. It's, it, also, if you're ACDC, it's something that actually yeah. goes beyond your power. So it's it, it does. Uh, yeah, it does. does Plus, they were changing um, engineers and produced yeah. production was different, um, which I had I had nothing to do with. That was 
I, I just play drums, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you said you didn't actually <coughs> write any of the songs. Uh, let's talk about those albums you did, which are Fly on the Wall, Blow Up Your Video, and Who Made Who. Yeah. Which was your contribution to those albums? How did it work for you? I mean, at which point of the composition you got the call, you know, to put your parts on? How did it work? Which was the routine well, or the schedule back then? Yeah, there'd be the time off after the finishing the tour, and that's the end of that stage of touring. And then it will be the writing period, or no. I mean, I, I think Mal and Angus are kind of writing a lot when they're... Uh, you know, on breaks from the tour yeah. and stuff, but they would come in and we'd, uh, there'd been a, um, a rehearsal uh, time uh, and they would bring in the different parts that they had for songs. Some were kind of complete, some were just tiny ideas mm -hmm. and just, just basically bash them around in rehearsal, you know, until um, it, it's amazing how... I, I learned and saw that how amazing it is to come up with a with simple idea that is good. Wow. It's really, it sometimes can be really difficult. Um, but, they, you know, they would come up with the ideas and I, I would just, I would, some had a drum machine that was worked out with regards to the rhythm and the, okay. the way the riff was and, and some others weren't. But it was always, you know, pretty straightforward and pretty, pretty much solid, so... Is there anything in particular that you put in any song that it was your idea and say, you know, no, the rhythm has to go like this or... Uh... I think I, me and, I think I helped with an idea. That's usually how it went. It wasn't one idea. It was okay. like, a, you know, we would all have ideas and stuff. Um, I think that's the way I want to rock and roll, that song. That, okay. that The start was, um, I suggested just changing it a little bit because it, it sounded really... A lot like a drum machine, okay. the pattern. So I thought if you just put in that extra kick there, it won't sound as drum machiney. <laughs> okay. You know, um, and there were a couple of others. I can't remember which ones they were, but um, it, it was basically keep it simple, keep it raw, keep it keep keep it solid. You know. Since you were always on tour, uh, did you ever work on any new songs? Maybe during sound checks or so, as a band? No. No, we never did. Never that. happened. No, okay. no, we never did. Because it was, it, we we would do things in sound check, but it, we would just like play a bit of blues. That okay. that's all it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's your favorite ACDC album among your records and also before or after? I always like Power Edge. Okay. I thought that was a great album. I love that song um, "Up to My Neck in You." Yeah. Uh, did I get, you ever I, have the chance to play it? No, we never did it. Okay, no, we, so Edo, you band. must mark it. <laughs> yeah. You never told me that. Yeah, well, you know. God. You said uh, down payment blues. Was yeah. Well, that's the wow, thing. Yeah, great one. You, you, we could be here all week talking about which songs <laughs> yeah. are the best because there's so many, right? You know, it's like, no doubt. Yeah. But I always okay. like that one. I, I like the whole album. I mean, it's really, yeah. really difficult to find a, you know, and, and I love, obviously, you know albums with Brian on I mean it's like brilliant some brilliant stuff yeah. who was your real body in ACDC oh, I think we all were oh. in, at one time you know it was um, it was, they were older than me so I listened a lot uh, especially to Malcolm you know I mean he had some some great I, I've seen him in situations where he'll just you know change things around and everything's alright again But um, I was never privy to any of the major decisions and the business of the band. I was basically a hired drummer. Okay. Yeah. So, all. But when they, when I did hear things, I listened, and I learned. You know, it was it was a lot the same way when when I, when I worked with Ronnie Ronnie James Dio. It, it was, was the rock same way. school for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, That's and if you're approach. not stupid, you'll, you'll, you'll <laughs> listen, shut up and listen, you know. You But, learn. you know, with ACDC, when we see also picture from back in the days, you seem very, you know, <gasps> strong unit and a real band, you know, also on stage. It, you, we could not, you know, perceive, feel the fact that you were just an air, a uh, higher drummer, you know. Th that was cool. I mean, that oh, seemed... You know, that, that's only... Um, An, an overlook of the whole thing. I mean, yeah. it was definitely was a band, but basically that's what I was. But they never made me really feel like that. Uh. You know, 
you know, they, they never slammed the door on the on me at all. You know, oh, we're having a business meeting. You know, it, they, it was, I was always felt like a member of the band. Yeah, definitely. And you left the band or you got fired from ACDC. What's the real story? Well, it's a bit of both. I okay. mean, yeah, I, I, my, my time had come to an end um, and I was feeling very kind of complacent about the whole thing. Um, and I knew in myself this is not fair to, to, to the fans and to the band. So it was kind of a mutual thing. Okay. I... I you know, kind of moved on and I, I, we had some time off after Blow Up Your Video and all. And we did a little bit of rehearsing with Razor's Edge. Um, but it, it really, I just really needed to move on. My enthusiasm was, was not there anymore. You know, it, I just it. really needed to go... Blah, 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 yeah, blah, to do blah, blah, something blah, blah, different. Yeah, there. yeah, you know, and it sounds crazy, but I mean, I was in the band quite a long time, about eight years, but I, I just need to move on, really. It was just... For my own sanity, you would take the same <laughs> decision if you, you know, could go back, uh, or you're you happy mean? of the fact that actually you let it go, you know, and oh yeah, do I, I, else. I needed to do that. I, okay. I needed to do that. And it, and so it you would, would do it again? I, uh, I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thinking back. I don't right. think there'll ever be a, another again. But <laughs> there you go. No, it was something that I needed to do, and. Uh, I was lucky enough to carry on and do some other projects that, that, that were quite good. Um, playing with Ronnie was fantastic, you know. Um, yeah, just very lucky and very happy with the way everything's turned out. Now we will go on Ronnie matter, but uh, okay. first, last things about ACDC. Actually, I still hope they will call you back, oh, since it seems that so. Chris is not in the band anymore. So. You were my first pick in my desires, you know, when they were looking for a new drummer. I was like, I hope Simon will be back. Oh, that's uh, nice. I, I wish, you know, maybe you... So you, Chris you, isn't you, th the... you thought the same, maybe, I don't know. But... Well, <laughs> yeah, I saw... I... Yeah, Chris isn't in so. the band? No, that's, yeah. these are rumors, you know. Ah, uh, yeah, there's always like rumors. No, I don't think so. So, you so never Simon. know. <laughs> Simon, that's it's your turn. Time to, to you see? If they Break. call you, what would you say? I can definitely consider it. <laughs> All right. So that's a message for Angus. All right. Cool. <laughs> no, and we, did a, we did do some great shows together, that's for sure. But it's been a long time. Um, and I still have the utmost respect for him and, you know, um, Cliff and Brian and... Everything to do with ACDC. They gave me the ride of my life. I'm a lucky man. Well, you know, now the band is basically Angus Young. You know, everybody left. So it's yeah. quite a weird you know, thing. If you if you go back, there will be a piece of history back in the band. So it will be I great. <laughs> I suppose so. I, I don't know. I thought, you know, Chris was doing a pretty good job. And I, when Axel did it, I thought he did a pretty good job of saving the tour and you know, but I, I just, a lot seems to have happened in a short space of time. Yeah. It's just really crazy. For um, a band that has been, you know, stick to it, its yeah. stuff for the, their whole career, it's weird, you know, seeing things changing so fast. It so. is, because they've been a solid family. Yeah. A couple of people leaving here and there, but right. it's been pretty solid for a long, long time. So I think it was, you know, when Axel came in to do it, that was a, a little bit of a shock for a lot of people, but he did a great job. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just down to Angus, I guess, and he, he, I'm sure he'll make the right decision. About drummers, uh, ACDC drummers, uh, which is the one you feel more, much more closer to and similar to in the spirit and musically? And what's your favorite drumming, Phil's or Chris? Oh, I have to say Phil. I'm sure Chris would say the same thing. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Phil was, when he started, I mean, his simplicity and his groove were, were so original to that, to that music, you know. Um, I, I'd never really heard drumming like that so simple before, because usually drummers want to do a drum fill. Yeah. And he, never, he hardly <laughs> did, and I, I, it was quite remarkable how he did that. And he's got a fantastic groove. I mean, you can't... You, you, you can't me and Chris, I think, do our best to replicate it, but it, you can't do it. It's yeah. it's Phil Rudd, you know. Yeah. You know it when it's him. 
Um, yeah, it's part of the sound of the band. Yeah, you know, it's it's, the, it's that that swing, that yeah. groove, you know, and that and that is a massive part of ACDC music. Not just the guitars and the voice and the and the lyric, the the groove of it too. You mentioned Malcolm, um, especially before. Uh, which is your best memory that you have about him? He just passed, passed away, so it's yes. Uh, that's some. That's a big lose, you know, for the band. And it, but it, what? What's your memory? Your oh, photograph the, about him? Yeah, no, there's so many. I mean, like I was saying earlier, I mean the way he would, you know, kind of, um, you know, like take control of a situation or so, and just uh, he was always the man that was always consulted first. But it was all quiet in a quiet way. It wasn't like, you know, oh, we got we have to go see Malcolm. You know, it was yeah. wasn't like that. It was just like. A big gang of lads. The crew were like almost like the band. We we're all mates, you know. Yeah. Everyone was mates and all. But um, yeah, Malcolm had a way with people and stuff that was uh, quite remarkable. And to act and to play with him, uh, to play a song with him was just incredible. He just got so he's so tight, yeah. but loose at the same time. I mean, he's just got this incredible rhythm, and uh, I I. He's the best rhythm guitar player in the world. Yeah. Also, Keith Richards, you know, told well, that. Well, yeah, I, he told you know that Malcolm oh, is he? the he, he did. Yeah. So it's if yeah. somebody like him, you know. Yeah. Well, also I, I think it. he's right. Yeah. <laughs> as well. No, the, he just had a style about him that was incredible. Yeah. I mean, rock solid. So you worked with Ronnie James Dio also right after ACDC, and that was another big gig. Uh, in your career, um, but that gig was maybe uh, more built around, you know, one charismatic leader. Even if Dio was a band, but that was his name and was his project. Uh, ACDC felt more like a unit, a band, more than you know the Dio band. Uh, anyways, I'm sure that there were some similarities in the dynamics, like you know the young brothers, as you said, were you know taking the decisions and so on and where the driving force behind it. But did you perceive any differently the two situations which were big gigs, you know, ACDC compared to Dio was uh, was the, the, the right step for you right after ACDC and how did you leave that? Oh, yeah, I mean, I, I loved it. I, th I thought it was fantastic. Ron to work with Ronnie was just amazing. I mean, you know, just to... He was not only a great guy, I mean, he was like a, a funny guy, but he was the boss. Yeah. Like you say, he was his band. <laughs> yeah. But he never made it feel like it was just his band. He made you feel like he needed you there, you know, Yeah. so it would be the band. So we were all good friends. I mean, there was no, um, what do you call, like dictatorship. Okay. At least I never saw that. So it was um, quite similar but different at the same time than acdc i mean did you have any chance to compose or uh you yes know, the, yeah me and that Ronnie was would, different yes okay. we would we would work together a lot more um on like drum ideas in rehearsal and you know uh, the, when i went in uh, some of the songs had already been uh worked out for the first album lock up your wolves and all so we we messed around with them a little bit. There was always that going on. He loved to work, to talk about the drums and what we should do there. And he would say, "No, you need to do more there. Do do some more there. <laughs> do some, something." And I'm going, "What do you want me to do?" <laughs> <You know? laughs> so I try and figure something out and screw that up and then start another one. You know, and so try you and mean that Malcolm uh, <clears throat> said to you less. Maybe sometimes you have to do less, and and Dio yes. was that you have to do more. Yes. So okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, there, there were times, yeah, when that happened, but it, it not much because I <laughs> then I understood. Uh, <laughs> and you go, oh, okay, I'm not doing that again. Um, but yeah, with Ronnie, it was always ideas. I mean, and it, you know, he he liked the way that I was. Um, you look, there'll always be comparisons, you know, because you've come in and there's been drummers before and all the rest of it. But he kind of liked the way I solidified things a little bit more, I think. Um, at least he told me that one a uh, couple of times. Um, but he, there were times when he would say, just let loose. And I would do that, or at least try to. And which yeah. is the best memory you have of Ronnie? Oh, there's Work. hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Well, I used to, you know, I, I ended up staying at his home for a long time. You know, I went through a divorce or whatever, boring stuff. But um, we would work, like, not on music. We'd work, I think I've mentioned this before, and um, we'd, like, build walls and stuff and walkways and fix his, his uh, backyard up the garden. And that was fantastic. I mean, that was, like, not doing music. It was a different way to kind of bond and, be, you know, become friends and stuff. That was really cool. A lot of hard work, mind you, but um, yeah. carrying bricks around and stuff like that. But no, <laughs> he, he he had a way about him. He could be really, you know, he could be really strong-minded and all, but his, his wit was super quick. Okay. You know, he's a really funny guy. I mean, it was great being around him. And I, I looked after him for a lot before he passed away, and that was uh, uh, left a big mark on me, you know. So you mean that... Um, some talents are blessed for a reason. I mean, there's no, it's no, not a case that somebody like Angus or and Malcolm or Ronnie were, you know, on top and had success. Oh, yeah, they, they you know, those people definitely have something going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, there's a, that, I think you can tell a person, you know, when you meet them, you know, they're either strong or they're, just completely funny or they're crazy, you know? I mean, yeah. um, they sort of carry a, what do you call that thing, like an aura yeah. about the them? Gods came <laughs> out from the clouds and say, you, yeah, and you, <laughs> and, and you. you. I think so, <laughs> and, you. and me a little bit, yeah. <laughs> well, I think he's still thinking about me. <laughs> he's going, oh, I'm not sure about this guy. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll see, yeah. Uh, he's got to join another couple of bands, yeah, if I, you know. <laughs> you also worked with some other greats like UFO, Michael yeah. Shanker Group, John Norum, yeah. Jeff Date, Operation Mindcrime. I Mind never worked Crime. with the with Michael Shanker Group. By no, the way. never. No, okay. it, it was going to be Michael Shanker Group. Then it be, but, okay. it, it turned into UFO. So just okay. to clarify that. Okay. No. Well. Yeah. Thanks. You're here for that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> cool. So how how were that? You know those experiences for you? Also Jeff Date with Operation yes. Mind Crime and. Uh, was that, yep. you know, tougher or uh, was another step, you it, know, in the right direction? Yeah, it, it, absolutely. Uh, it seemed like the right thing to do. And I was lucky enough to, it came around. With UFO, it was uh, just a friend of a friend who, um, anyway, yeah, I did that for about three and a half years. And it was just, it was great. I mean, it's, they're really great people. I mean, they really are. Um, we had, they're strange people too. <laughs> <laughs> they're funny people. <laughs> but no, it was fantastic. I loved UFO and to, to actually get to play. I, you know, I had Strangers in the Night when I was a kid. Used yeah. to play along to it. Of course. Um, now to actually be there, be in the band, we go to Chicago and it's, hello Chicago, will you please welcome for me? And I'm sitting there going, <laughs> really? <laughs> Sounds like the album. <laughs> Did you ever ask yourself, why me? I mean, you deserved it, you know, you deserved it, but yeah. you, you must, uh, you why know, me? also feel, you know, lucky because out of the blue, you were in the big business. So, well, did you ever... I, it's when, it, when things are going really crazy, you go, why me? <laughs> you, know, for, okay. you know, and things that you just don't know where things are going, you go, why me? You know, like, again? But... um. <laughs> No, I think it's a misconception because I think a lot of people think, okay, you know, it's kind of like when you tell somebody, a friend who's not quite sure what you do, and you go, oh, I'm going to Italy for three weeks. I'm going to, you know, Russia. And they go, they think you're going on vacation, <laughs> you know, and it's it's hard work. You know, <laughs> you get there, you travel, you maybe get some sleep, You got then you got to play. Yeah. Um, I'm not complaining, it's just a misconception. Everybody thinks it's really easy. You get in a band, you get in UFO. Oh man, you're, yeah, that's great. And it was good. But when you get in those bands, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, you know? it is. But I'm sure that in one of those situations, you felt like a king at some point, you know, and say, okay, yes, I made it. Which one of them made you feel like that? I, I obviously, <laughs> I. A king on the drum throne. <laughs> well, a lot. Of, I never really felt. I I felt good about myself. I mean, can't deny that. Who wouldn't? You know, you're playing drums in ACDC or any of these bands. Dio. I mean, it, it's really cool. 
But um, I, I think one thing that I did was I kind of looked inside. This is getting weird, but I, what I mean, really mean is you, you think, yeah, why me? Like, go back to that question. Yeah. And that's another thing you have to really uh, think about when you're, you're you're a musician is you have to get along with the other players and sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But that is a, as big a part as being a drummer, yeah. you know, being a good drummer, if you like. Yeah. So, you, you know, that's what made me, I, you know, I didn't really feel like a king. I mean, <laughs> I felt happy, I guess, uh, tired. Okay. You know, a tired king. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. But you got to be able to get along with people as well. That's another thing of, of it, I guess. Um, what's the biggest sacrifice that you had, you know, to take to have a career like yours as a true, you know, hard man at work in music and especially in rock and roll? Mm, well, you, yeah, miss your family quite a bit, mm -hmm. but that's rock and roll. Um, you do have to yeah spend a lot of time away from yeah. your family and stuff you try to see those tour were long man <laughs> yeah yeah they were i mean and so you know they would come out on the road but it's not the same thing as just being relaxed and being at home you yeah. know so i think that's a sacrifice that not just me but a lot of musicians make you know but then if you have a strong family you know they understand that and everything's yeah oh cool And, you know, in terms of, you know, work, I mean, you, you practice a lot. I, I read somewhere mm -hmm. that you're self-taught. Is mm -hmm. that correct? And yeah. you've been self-taught your whole career, I mean, or at some point you were developing techniques and... No, uh, not really. I, I, I learned from playing along to records. Okay. Like, I think a lot of people did that. And a lot of people had lessons from people. Yeah, I, I'm sure. But no, I found it the easiest way. I wanted to kind of figure it all out for myself <laughs> and just go, ha ha, I did that, you know, kind yeah. of thing, you know. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's important to kind of do it yourself. If you're learning from somebody else, you know, you, you're not, you have less chance of being original, I think. Okay. But I could be wrong, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, Simon, music business changed a lot uh, since you very first started. Uh, how is it uh, from your point of view today? Is rock really dead or it simply needs, you know, some reviving, some resuscitation or I don't know. Well, what's I, your point? Yeah, I, I mean, since since, you know, we got the Internet and everything and everybody can make up their own songs in their bedroom or wherever they are and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's just crap um i think that destroyed record labels because people can do it all by themselves so there's no record company advances there still are some record companies but um i think a lot of the mystery of of music and bands disappeared Because you can see so much of it on the computer. Okay. You know, before it was an always seemed like an underground thing, you know, or maybe you get a fanzine letter or a little tape cassette in the, in, in the mail. Yeah. Now you just send MP3s. You know, it's like I think it took a lot of the mystery out of. Yeah. Uh, so what, that's the what, big point. Well, that's one of them, I think, okay. and I think that might be the main one. I could be wrong. I'm not sure, but uh, you know. Um, With, with streaming uh, music, people can do that from their bedroom and they don't have to go down to the record store and buy a record anymore, yeah. you know. It's... You don't have to sweat to have a record. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You don't have to get in a van, you don't have to And research go down the... for it, you know, and say, yeah, yeah. so that's, uh, exactly, that's yeah. also yeah. some magic yeah. that you lose about that. Yeah. It's too immediate, too fast. It and, is. And it comes and goes fast. Yeah. yeah. Same about, time. What about factor American talent. Yeah. And all this kind of shit. Was that last word you said? Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm so the, the last that. word sums it all? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. What, what do you uh, think of that? Well, that's an opportunity, but you have to use it the correct way. And sometimes they just use you and yeah. they don't build any career anymore so that's the point yeah. 
Yeah. It's just take it and leave it. You, know, you, you so. said it. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any new projects that you're yes. working at at the moment? Which are they? Do you want to tell us something about them? Yeah, that'd be great. It's nice to be back in Italy doing Riff Raff again. Like I said earlier, that's really yeah. cool. But um, we have a project. Um, my friend Craig Goldie asked me if I would like to do it, and it's a band uh, called Dream Child, and it's myself, Craig Goldie, Rudy Sarzo, Wayne Finley, and uh, a singer that Craig found called Diego Valdez. Okay. And the project's called Dream Child, and uh, the album should be out, um, I think, around November. All right. Um, but it turned out really good. I mean, I'm not just saying that. It, it really did turn out special. So oh. keep an eye out for that one. Great. And then, obviously, you know, we, we, we still have Dio Disciples, and we've got lots of dates. Um, oh, up until August, then yeah. I think we're going to stop because we've just been signed a record deal. So we're going to do a Dio Disciples album as well this okay. year. And uh, quite busy. And then I'm in Australia in June. No, July. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then back in Australia again in November. So... So you've been involved also in the hologram tour? Yes. Okay. So, how, I mean, what's your point um, of view on that? I mean, went, it, how does it feel, it, it you know, being well. there? You know, I with... couldn't really see it, to be honest with you. I was too mm. busy playing to a click. Okay. You know, so. which I don't really do very much. <laughs> 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 But that's fair enough. That's, that's the only way that it, it, it can be done, yeah, is to a course. click. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, don't, I didn't really see it very much. I saw footage of it. And it, it, it looked great, you know, it really did. I mean, um, they're, they're working more on it this year. Uh, we did some, uh, a month's tour um, of Europe um, in December 2017. Um, and it's kind of gone into the shop. So they're working on it and tweaking yeah. it a little, a little bit more to make it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. um, and there's talk of that going out again in 2019. Yeah, I thought it turned out great, and it's going to be even better. Yeah. Which, which was your first reaction when they proposed, you know, yeah. the thing to you? It well, they, like... did, they, they, they didn't, they just told me they were going to do it. Okay. <laughs> so... and, and, did I, you know, obviously, the, the guy who owns it is a great guy. It, it was the CEO of the hologram company, Illusion, yeah. um, is a massive fan. His name's Jeff Pizzuti, and uh, he's just totally committed to it. Um, He, he does have other projects going on, but his first love is Ronnie, and he, he, he wanted us to play with the hologram, Deal Disciples, that me and Craig and Scott Warren and Bjorn, and um, we've got Tim Ripper Owen singing on it as well, and Oni Logan. We do our, yeah. um, just band songs in between the hologram. And he's just, his enthusiasm for the whole thing is fantastic. I mean, he's just great, you know, so... He wanted us on board, and hopefully we'll be going out again with it in 2019. Wow. Yeah. And about the Operation Mind Crime project, is yes. that really it? I mean, is, yeah, is yeah. it finished and done? I, I kind of, there wasn't much going on, and I, I just, people were saying, people would, you know, get a hold of me and say, oh, we'll see you at the next show, and I go, no, you won't, because I'm not going to be there. You know? <laughs> so I had to put something out, you know. Um To, to say, look, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all good, but I, I wish them all the best. There's no problem. It's just like, I just had, had enough of that. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there any band that you went very close to work with, but it never happened? And what's your big dream at the moment as an artist? No, there was never a band. I mean, it was, there was talk of projects, but not really, you know, recording projects. Okay. Like a lot of time musicians will get together and um, I guess you call it like an all-star band or whatever, but it, no, there wasn't any particular band. Okay. Because I've always kind of been in a band in one way or another, you know, so I'm not really looking. Okay. I get asked a lot to do projects, which is really good. Really, I really appreciate that. And I'm usually always up for listening, you know, um, It's good, then then I'll do it. But um, what was the other part of your question? If, which is your big dream at at the moment as an artist? Mm. If you have any you know big goal still that you want to reach mm. in your career, 
You got Jimmy Page's number? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's look in my agenda if I have yeah, it. Let's look his number. Up. I hope so. She's got it. <laughs> yeah. She has it. Oh, I mean, come on, that's Jimmy Page. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. <laughs> but um, no, no. I mean, there's there's a lot of you you can't really look that far because there's so much stuff going on at the moment. And obviously, if Jimmy Page called up, I wouldn't say no. But you know. <laughs> of course. But um. You, you can't really look that far because you, you've got this much to do yet yeah. before you can seriously think about looking around again. And then comes a phone call. <laughs> Hello, Simon. Yeah. Would you like to join the Zeppelin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, yeah. click. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, it's you, yeah, yeah sure. Ass on. <laughs> yeah. At no, some point, you also work with Rhino Bucket. Is that correct? Yeah, Rhino, Rhino Bucket. Rhino Bucket yeah. is uh, that was uh, an ACDC influence band. Yes. How, which was the connection? I mean, they called you because just just friends. Um, I was in a period after um, uh, Ronnie um, went back to Black Sabbath, so I was just floating around, and a friend of mine, who was a friend of my wife's at the time. She knew the guys, and she said, listen to this. What do you think? These guys are looking for a drummer. And it was the first album, and I went, oh, okay. Well, I can do that. <laughs> but more than, more than that, it was like, how are they, you know? And they're, they're really cool people. They're great people. They're good friends. And, and they still are, so, you know. So that was a good experience. Yeah. Oh, it was great. Funny, funny stuff. You know, they, you know, to a certain extent, don't take themselves too seriously, which I like. You know, I, I needed that at that time, you know, and they were really great people, you know. So you've been twice as lucky because you did all the things that you liked, but also you found good people that, you know. Yeah, along the way. Yeah, like, yeah. So yeah, some great people. Great. You know. Good karma. <laughs> yeah. It's got a good karma sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> Not all good people, but I have met some good people. <laughs> Okay, so last last uh, question, which is the song that you enjoy the most to play with Riff Raff, a CDC song that you still really, when you play it, you say, wow, that's... No. <laughs> <laughs> that's Chrissy's song. <laughs> no, it's funny. I, I've been really like enjoying playing for those about to rock. Okay. And, and it, when he told me they're going to do it, and I said, well, how the hell are you going to do that? You ain't got no cannons, have you? <laughs> And he says, no, we have a pedal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the sounds of that. That sounds great. Sounds great <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you and have just yeah. the sound, but not the canon. Sometimes yeah. we, we play in, uh, in places where the PA is really uh, <coughs> is, is amazing. It's a big PA, so yeah. it sounds like really, really hard. Yeah, it sounds yeah, great. And, and playing that song again is, is great. It, I don't know, it's something about it. Did, really cool did song. you change it? I mean, the patterns through the years, or just a little just bit? The, okay, <laughs> um, just a little. But it's the same pattern that I played when I was in the band. Okay. So, you know, that's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thanks, Simon, for sure. your time for this great interview today, and hope to see you soon back to Italy. Thank you, Barbara. Great talking with you. Great Thank questions. You so much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Simon.